Welcome to our Tajil Theme Podcast. Today we have Wing Commander Arvin Pandesa. We spoke about his first-hand experiences and insights aimed at annihilating Pakistani intruders on the Tolonik Peak. We also spoke about the challenges he faced and all the triumphs we celebrated as a nation after capturing Point 5140. Watch this entire podcast to learn about the contribution of Indian Air Force in the Kargil War. But till then, let's invite Arvind Pandey sir on PWK in this Kargil theme podcast. Vande Mataram, Bharat Mata ki jai. Jai Hind. Commander Arvind Pandey sir how are you I am fine I am good what are you thinking nowadays uh, this is my first experience uh, I'll give you my fun, final concluding <laughs> opinion after finishing this because I never experienced this before <laughs> how has your life been so far fantastic no regrets in life enjoyed thoroughly good experience path of life is very good and one must enjoy some ups and downs are there always but one must enjoy life you know <clears throat> this is my first uh, defense uh, podcast so far and there have been i mean i have tried my best to invite many people but it did not happen because of some reasons and i want to know about you like i want to know how you started how do you actually you know decided to enroll yourself in the air force uh, defense academy and everything and how did you actually become uh, the kargil war hero i want to know everything okay life has been very simple and easy for me okay i did my graduation unfortunately when i was studying that time i didn't know anything about india because of our exposure to different things but I, once i started doing my graduation i joined ncc and uh, there is ncc c certificate which you get after 3 years of ncc training then after you can go directly for interview to air force army i went for air force interview first time i was rejected second time i was selected <laughs> and uh, when they asked me why do you want to join air force so i told them this is the first job opportunity that's all because i didn't have any exposure of air force also and finally got passed out in 1988 almost <coughs> 36 years back joined helicopter stream subsequently flew helicopters to exotic places helicopter flying is really fun flying okay nobody else would enjoy this kind of flying it's thrilling you go to new places which nobody has ever visited your operations are totally different okay rescue operation fire fighting operation life saving operations along with that troop deployment you do armament version you attack everything you can do with the helicopter so flying wise it was total fulfilling and life wise also it was equally fulfilling why did you you know would decide i mean see the reason people join defense is because they want to serve the nation but uh, here you are saying that uh, there was only one job opportunity why is that so i didn't say that it was the one job opportunity after graduation this was the first job opportunity Achha, i accepted okay 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 had i not been selected in air force i would have done something different hmm. but in interview when they asked why do you want to join air force okay everybody in south nation okay in case you become a fauji you serve nation as a fauji if you are a doctor uh, you serve as a doctor and if you do your best you are doing you giving your service 
So it's only the opportunity you get, and you see the nation. Now I'll come straight away to the tragic things. I want to know everything. Like uh, what had exactly happened? Um, I've read so I'm much about it. I saw the some videos about it also. But I want to know from you. Like your experience matters the most. Okay. So first, uh, let me give you a slight background about Kargil operation. Sure, sure. So there is a line of control, hmm. okay, which runs east to west. Hmm. North of that is Pak occupied Kashmir, and if you draw that line straight, then north of that is Siachen, which is in our control. All along this line, which is about 105 miles, you can say around 200 kilometers. The standard practice used to be that uh, during winters, because winters are very harsh, temperatures are less than <coughs> minus 40 degrees centigrade. Snow will pile up to almost 15 to 20 feet. <coughs> so it was a standard practice that in winters, Pakistani post, hmm. which used to occupy along the line of control. They used to vacate their post, and Indians used to vacate their post. Pre-summers in that area, that is in May, okay, first week, everybody used to go and occupy their post again and start vigilance over there. It was failure on uh, different side, okay. political failure military failure will not go in that because mm. uh, i would like to share my experiences more so uh, pakistani occupied our side post and they didn't vacate during winters we vacated in good faith and subsequently they didn't vacate in summers also so somewhere in first week of may 1999 report started coming that they have occupied our post and they the importance of this post is all along nh1 which runs from shrinagar till kargil and further up towards leh from this post you can see that road clearly and you can direct firing from pakistan side with artillery which has range of about 30 to 40 kilometers and accurately fire on the road so any logistic which is going on that road uh, you can hit it directly that is the importance of that post so it's a observation post all these post so when indian forge came to know that that has been occupied so first i think first week 5th or 6th of may 1999 five people went for reki they were captured they were tortured and they were killed this was uh, captain kalia and his four boys were brutally uh, murdered you can say unfortunately that has been the trend of pakistanis or these countries to torture people so that that fear and threat is set in and uh, then after army movement started increasing vigilance started increasing uh, i went to kargil on 16th of may and then after on the very first day i started troop deployment in uh, gurez sector that is center kargil area okay close to dras so we were dropping unfortunately i had one accident because uh, i was carrying troops and this was the last sortie of the day so they carried ammunition in dekchi dekchi is a big uh, utensil where you cook rice about 20 25 kg rice you can cook in that they had kept ammunition thinking that maybe tomorrow weather might be bad so they may not be able to carry their ammunition <coughs> So when I picked up a helicopter, it was quite heavy. So I decided to drop three troops, and we calculate troop as 120 kg. So instead of 1600 kgs, I thought it's around 1260 kg. I took off. There are lot many factors. It's difficult to explain how this accident took place. But after takeoff, I went into a tree, 
chopped up that tree with my rotor about 20 odd feet i was about to crash so instead of going into the uh, vehicles i turned a car and landed into river a car took off on its own it was like a galloping horse and the flight time from that place to shinagar was just 19 minutes i took about 45 minutes to reach shinagar we landed there safely but subsequently we realized that it was not 1260 kg it was 2400 kg Ooh. that's why that heavily loaded aircraft actually but we all survived thank god <laughs> okay, that's most important <clears throat> this was pre kargil hmm. and from 26th uh, may 1999 a force came into action and a force attack started 27th may we carried out on 26th may two attacks and both were quite successful this was the first time uh, helicopters were used at such a high altitude tiger hill and tololing were more than 15000 feet even during that time americans were interested in helping indian air force because uh they never uh, fought any warfare at this altitude okay so it was they wanted to gain first hand experience so mm. quite a few countries were mm. interested in participating in this so on 26th we carried out two attacks on tiger hill and uh, 26th two fighter aircraft were shot down in butalik sector one was nachiketa who was pow and he was released after about a week or so and second was skondida auja he was captured and uh, he was also brutally killed remember whoever is killed in that with single bullet is killed by pakistani army if somebody is tortured butchered and killed is by mujahid okay that is the first indication who captured whom auz auz captured by mujahid and it was blatant lie by pakistanis that this entire thing entire operation is by pakistani mujahidin or afghanistani mujahidin or kashmiri fighters but it was not so uh, it was led by pakistani army uh, with this mujahid okay there were a lot many intelligence uh, failure or we were not able to take a clue from them like uh, all along nh1 wherever army is there uh, civilians are there during month of march april may sale of all the items went up by almost 400 to 500 times and all these bakarwals who used to graze these animals used to come down pick up items pick up items like tin sheets okay toothpaste brush uh, some moisturizer sunscreen everything was purchased from here and provided to pakistanis who were op- occupying this post so there were lot many hints clues which were ignored at every level including uh, towards bakarwal sector which is in northern sector uh, north of shinagar sorry sonmarg uh, helicopters were not permitted in that valley because from that valley there is to fire this was pre kargil okay so we were told told to avoid that valley so there were blunders there were failures and there are too many books who people who have good experience good writing skill they have put down that and uh, the biggest experience of kargil war was 28th may 1999 on this day initially total 6 helicopters were to take part in attack on tololing 5140 hmm. okay yeah i know so this tololing is Uh, north of dras the first peak is 4590 which is uh, overlooking dras so maybe in case you calculate aerial distance is about 2 uh, kilometers and then after there is a saddle and there is a peak the peak is called 4950 
so in uh, morning briefing we were told that the first reach we have captured by army and we were told to attack the second reach so in case first reach is captured in between which saddle is there that is dominated okay so nobody will be able to fire from here till that side but uh, again that was actually wrong input which was given uh, that rig was not uh, captured by indians oh. so pakistan is were sitting there so imagine if you are attacking off from this side this is the first ridge line hmm. there is a saddle hmm. and you are going for attack on this this is about 10 or kilometers distance if you are attacking from here if this is captured nobody will be able to fire uh -huh. to this point somebody will fire hmm. from this hmm. right okay. yeah but in case this is not captured he is firing on you continuously hmm so when we went for attack here fire and turn back the chap from this place and on this saddle was continuously firing on us uh unfortunately during that time indian air force indian army indian political system nobody was geared up for this war okay so uh, our aircraft were not well equipped there is something called cmds that is counter missile dispensing system it has got two types okay one is flare in case heat seeking is missile is fired then we use flares so it's a fireball like a uh, crackers hmm. which starts with temperature of 15 degrees and at 700 degrees it slowly dies down and is fired from both the sides of aircraft so when your missile is fired uh, either you fire that time or you while ingress when you are going in for attack so from 5 km you start firing because missile has a range of around 3 and a half 4 km hmm. from 5 km you start firing your flares and go 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 fire from here turn back go 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 till 5 km you have those flares so your aircraft is protected okay so that day total six helicopters were to take uh, part in this attack luckily i would say two aircraft went on serviceable okay no, no. so the out of those two aircraft one was with flare and one didn't have flare we had total <coughs> 12 helicopters over there out of which six aircraft had we have habit of calling helicopters also aircraft okay <laughs> so six helicopter had flares so the uh, composition final one was four aircraft with one aircraft without flare that was number 3 aircraft my co was uh, leader of this formation his way aircraft went unserviceable so he came to my aircraft okay i was number 6 being most junior over there that time so i became number 1 so he was sitting on the right side i was flying and firing was my part because firing controls are with the captain when we went for a attack so two aircraft used to go in body formation okay one is to fire once his firing is over he is to turn second is to fire turn now third and fourth has gap of about 45 seconds so third will come fire turn fourth will fire and turn now this third aircraft didn't have flares and we climbed to something called 5.2 km which is about 17 and a half thousand approximately and from there you have to put in dive so we are like a sitting duck because helicopter speed is just 120 140 km at that altitude so when third aircraft fired he didn't have flares fourth aircraft had continuous flare so till the time of firing he was protected because of this helicopter once it turned uh, it was away from this flare and that time it was hit by pakistanis okay it's seeking missile so i heard that starboard engine on <laughs> only this much and then after it's actually full call is starboard engine on fire there is a system called natasha in helicopter in case of major emergency is automatically transmits on rt okay so all the aircrafts can hear and uh, then i told my sir sir somebody is giving call and that was a, that is generally a female voice so he said ki maybe some airlines bola sir we are on confidential channel nobody can give mm. article on this 
Then he landed at Matayan, which is just ahead of Zozila, okay, short of grass. That time when brigadier came to the aircraft, generally you won't find a brigadier running towards the aircraft. Mm. I said ki something must be wrong. So he came, he said ki while going there were four helicopters, while coming back only three came. Then my CO went in one Chetak Chita helicopter, army helicopter. And uh, he went to that site where helicopter had crashed. Unfortunately, we knew that nobody will survive. Rest two aircrafts had seen that aircraft going down. Because while turning, they were able to see. One gunner, he was behind, he saw. And uh, Pakistani never used to waste their ammunition, okay. They never fired on Chetak or Chita which were flying. They used to fire on fighter aircraft or armed helicopter which are threat to them. So they were not totally stupid. Okay. They also used their Malum quite well. So that was actually a last attack. Then after all the attacks were stopped. Then in June they suddenly realized that we should do some night attack. By then everybody was posted out. My CEO was posted out to some different department. I was from Hindan, Nubra Warriors. And uh, this helicopter which was shot down was from Sarsaba. Skandidar, Pundir, like Lieutenant Mohilen, Prasad and Sahu were the crew. My salute to them, all respect to them, okay, because this was something which uh, will be remembered throughout the life. So that was the uh, participation in Kargil, the attack. Then uh, on 2nd of uh, July 1999, I was told to go to Kargil again, that is Srinagar. Because by then, everybody who was there, uh, none of them had taken part in Kargil attack. So we all people were left. So I went there, uh, I was given a training sortie at a uh, firing range over there which is called Toshamadana at around 4.95 kilometers because night attack was also at that altitude. And uh, uh, there were too many things actually disturbing. I was not too happy with that attack because uh, half information was given to me and I was the only person who had taken part in previous attack. That's why I was told that you must go with uh, task force commander over there who was from other unit. So we three helicopters were supposed to take off for night attack. Only one aircraft took off. And that was RT silence means you can't give any call. We went there, put the aircraft on dive. Suddenly, I realized that somebody has fired a missile from there. So, uh, I said, flares. So, other pilot, Wing Commander Mittal, he was with me. He fired flares. And uh, unfortunately, we never uh, practiced flare firing by night. Because 1500 degrees is very, very bright. And our instruments were at dim light position. There were no external lights so that we cannot be identified. And because of that flare, I was unable to see all the instruments inside also. Okay. So we took a recovery action and came back. At, at the time of landing, we realized that we were the only aircraft which took off instead of three helicopters. Luckily, some good prudence that was the last attack and then after we stopped attack. One most unfortunate part in Kargil was that it's taught everywhere. Never use helicopters or uh, transport or fighters as extended artillery hand, okay? Because uh, if you can hit a target with artillery gun, why use helicopter? Okay? 
but here everywhere it is used just to say that it boosts morale of the army personnel there are different places different uh, philosophies to utilize helicopter that should have been more appropriate because utilization of your expensive resources wisely is more important so like <clears throat> when you came to know that uh, you have to do what was what were the things that came into your mind at that very moment uh yes in boxing um uh, not life not life boxing. any intense game okay this is also game war game we call okay so whenever you are in any intense game so you forget about everything uh, you concentrate only on that game uh, believe me i never thought about my kid never thought about my wife when i went for that and it never came in my mind also so you are blank from rest of the thing you are concentrating on your attack your concentration is so high that even a uh, maybe a deer or dog running on the road from 2 km you can identify any moving thing you can identify so somebody is firing that bloom you can see when i went for night attack like uh, uh, firing from ak47 it's amazing to see every seventh bullet is a tracer bullet tracer bullet is a bullet which has a phosphorus on top so seventh bullet you can see okay where it's sitting the reason for using tracer bullet is if you know the target is this one and you are firing but it's going 3 feet right by night you will never realize where your bullets are going so seventh bullet you can see again you shift your target and hit okay that is tracer bullet so you can see every tracer bullet in that you can see mprl filing going on tiger hill there are shells which uh, illuminates target which was the last shell fired before we went in for attack that illuminated tiger hill we were for night uh, we were going for tiger hill attack so personal things never bothers you actually when you are going in for attack and once you come back uh, we pilots are very funny we speak only about flying <laughs> so nothing bothers us okay <laughs> so like you know nowadays as you can see many now like bollywood have started uh, covering those war movies and everything wherein they show some things that are not possible in real life and some are not possible in real life um i want to know i won't name any of the movies but i want to know your opinion on those movies see bollywood movies and real life both are different and in bollywood movie also they put that this is a fictitious yes so they are right in their own way because they have to sell their movie they have to make it more dramatic more challenging more heroic and hero can do anything flying from helicopter till driving vehicle till repairing runway in real life you have only one role to play you will play that role so nothing to say bollywood doing wrong or wrong otherwise nobody will go and see their movie okay that hero has to be very handsome <laughs> uh, can't be like me 5 feet 8 inches and <laughs> looking okay but in forge all heroes are moderate looking with moderate intelligence but very sheer high will power okay that is the difference so my all thanks and hats off to bollywood also that they have started taking interest in uh, these movies that in good term what has been the most challenging part of your job of serving the nation as a wind commander uh, this serving this nation um, i feel sometimes that uh, we are unnecessarily glorifying ourselves okay why i mean uh, we are doing our job okay, okay. <coughs> so like uh, nowadays you will see there are few doctors who actually are serving nation because they are serving poor free of cost they got a big hospital okay so those people are serving we are with our own will 
voluntarily joined forge okay so first thing it was not compulsory then after we voluntarily joined our stream helicopters transport fighters so we it was our wish then after we flew we got some tasks some people did that task some people refused you have every kind of person everywhere some people fought war some people said give some example okay some excuses they didn't join it's good <laughs> no credit taken so whatever came to my side mere jholi mein jo aaya wo sab maine kiya so that was nothing like serving the nation it was a good opportunity for me good experience for me you know nowadays people i don't know why but maximum number of people want to join indian army and not indian air force i mean why is that so this might this might not be the reason but i still want to know during our time i think around uh, four to five lakh people used to appear for cds exam i also appeared nowadays that number has gone up to around 19 to 20 lakh do you think that people don't want to join air force and army out of 19 to 20 lakh hmm. for direct entry you have about 25 to 30 people who join every 6 months out of 20 lakh for nda that number is maybe around 150 finally we pass out out of 200 just less than 100 we were 105 people who joined afa i am direct entry people who joined from nda out of which only 53 people passed out okay 50% were drop out because of different reason they couldn't cope up with the flying so i don't think there is uh, any shortage of people who want to join air force or army so maybe those people who don't get selected they have excuse to say yeah, i didn't want to join air force that's why i went to army and i didn't get selected in army <laughs> so you know whenever i thought uh, come to know about any defense personnel who has been an active participant of uh, any war zone or any war front the first thing that comes into my mind is what actually motivates them what drives them because you you all are completely different from others honestly i mean if we asked any person any civil person who is doing a normal nine to five job that would you like to do he will actually start thinking about it for 10 minutes 20 minutes an hour or so but what actually drives a defense personnel when he decides to you know serve the nation see our tuning from nda days or direct entry days is different we are tuned that way. like i said boxer okay boxer box he doesn't think that he will get a punch he start practicing he get too many punches he is hard and tough and similarly a fauji is during our training also in uh, flying it's not piece of cake uh, a cap from outside looks very flying peacefully but inside there is a war going okay instructor is thrashing his pupil reason behind that that training is made so tough that daily routine flying becomes very easy more you bleed in peace uh, better you fight in war that way our training is really really tough okay physical as well as mental so when we go for a war we are practicing for that we are preparing for that and we are you ask any forge 100% will say yes in my life i want to see at least one war i want to experience that i got trained for that i joined this armed forces for that okay so that's all that motivates every forge that's the aim of every forge that's the dream of every forge so before ending this podcast i just want uh, you to give an advice over life to those people who are who want to do something for the country but they are clueless like from where should they start see 
um, yes, there are so many opportunity, opportunities nowadays that uh, people, it's very difficult uh, for them to uh, select career mm. as such. The most important thing, even if you are not chosen career at the age of say 14, 15, when you are in 10th standard or 12th standard, but if you are focused about your studies or whatever you are doing, whatever your passion is, be focused, give your time, love that job. The things will fall in place automatically. Don't start thinking from 12th, I want to become a IITian, I want to become civil servant. Yes, you should study, but don't think about becoming IS every day. So if you study, focus on study, you will become IS automatically. If you focus on IS, you will stop your studies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they say that it's uh, difficult to imprint on a cluttered mind. It's like difficult to write on a newspaper. You require a blank paper. So your mind should be blank when you are studying, you are reading something. So absorption is much higher. So, live your life today, forget about tomorrow, you will have success tomorrow. So, thank you so much for devoting your precious time on this podcast and for enriching many young students who will be watching this particular podcast. And this podcast is going to be uploaded on the Republic Day 2024, which is going to come in few days. And... This has been one of the, by far the most, uh, my favorite and the most amazing podcast ever. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is uh, my first podcast. Okay. Yes. Uh, never seen such big mic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for giving this opportunity and uh, uh, I could share my experience <laughs> with everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So this was Wind Commander Arvind Pandey sir, who came on the podcast to share some really amazing facts about the Kargil war operation Safed Sadr. He also spoke about his journey as an NNFS pilot. I'm pretty sure that you must have liked this podcast and you must have also gained a hell lot of knowledge through this. If you liked this podcast, please do like share and subscribe the channel to witness such amazing podcasts always. Team Tunan Tulchani and Team PWK will be back with such amazing episodes. But till then, stay safe, stay happy. Love you guys.